So here we have a gauge check underway where we've simply taken a tube and connected it from the input of both channels so the air inside the tube has been compressed naturally by squeezing it on and we've dropped down originally from about 200 pascals now we're down to about 80 pascals or so and we'll notice that each channel is displaying almost exactly the same pressure which means as the pressure is dropping because it's being released due to the solenoids which are doing the auto zero we're checking it all the way down through the range and this gauge is performing very nicely as well as this one is also. We have almost exactly the same reading between each uh, channel and this one's dropped all the way to the end. So we can say this one is complete and this check here can be actually frozen by turning the auto zero off. Auto zero is off and it will stay more or less frozen at one pressure and sit there for quite some time which tells us that the gauge is not leaking either. So here we're only off about half a pascal or so, less than half of 1%. So we've been able to check the gauges between the input or the positive of channel A, the positive of channel B. We can also do a check on the negative side. So we take the tube and press it on this port, press it on this port, and we're now checking the negative side of the gauge again at negative 300 pascals and it will drop all the way down through the range. This is a very fast way that in a couple of minutes you can check your gauge as you're using it from day to day and you will immediately discover whether there's a problem. If you want to go one step further than this you can check to see that the positive is in alignment with the negative and you simply do that by placing the tube from the positive of the input of one channel to the reference of the other and we'll notice that the positive and negative are also in alignment. We can do exactly the same thing with this gauge the only difference being that the connections are on the back we can check negative to negative by just connecting those two ports together take a little while for them to kind of balance themselves out. Again if we have some time averaging involved it's going to take a little bit of time for it to catch up to the average. In this case it's one second. I'm not sure what the average is here. So here we're out about two percent. One percent one half a percent. So we can tell that there's nothing in particular wrong with either one of these gauges. They're all performing just fine. If you notice the big difference between these two channels, you may want to consider sending the gauge back for recalibration. But unless you see a difference between the two channels, in most cases there's no need to do that.